Hello, my friends, I'm Hades Manticore, and today we're going to be breaking away from all traditions on this channel by reviewing a new ish game. Streets of Rage 4, the latest and now greatest in the Streets of Rage franchise. Emerging 26 years after the last canon entry in the franchise, Streets of Rage 4 and nay, the whole of Streets of Rage emerged from death like a glorious phoenix on April 30th of 2020, and much like Christ when he emerged from the cave after his resurrection, has brought an age of belief upon the world as a whole. Streets of Rage 4 was jointly developed by Dot Emu, Lizard Cube, and Guard Crush Games, a French triumvirate of all things, meaning Streets of Rage 4 is the most meaningful thing the French have ever contributed to the world. I jumped the gun a bit by being so positive about this game already, but what? Do you think there could possibly be a negative review of this game out there? Story. Streets of Rage 4's story is simple. Ten years have passed since the defeat and death of Mr. X in Streets of Rage 3. Axel has retired from the forest and has become a fighting hobo, much like Ryu from Street Fighter. Blaze has also retired from the forest after slugging the corrupt police commissioner in the face, and Adam Hunter is now a special forces agent on top secret work. Things are as peaceful as they can be after the fall of a major crime syndicate. But a new shadow falls over Wood Oak City. The old crime syndicate has been reformed, but this time under the children of Mr. X, Mr. Y, and Miss Y are now leading things and causing just as much mischief as their old man was. Blaze Fielding, now a PI and a dance instructor too, fun fact, still working in Wood Oak City as well, knows this new organization needs to be brought down and puts out a call to help to all of her old allies. Axel, of course, answers the call to help his old friend. While Adam is currently off on secret business, his daughter Cherry takes place wanting to call the scum from her home, and lastly comes Floyd Araya, a massive young man whose bionic arms were built by Dr. Zan and happily takes his place to pay back the debt he owes the fine doctor. These four are your base heroes for Streets of Rage 4. Let's talk about them for a bit. Keep a long story short, they fucking rock. Two OGs and two newcomers. Perfect balance. The OGs sport fantastic new updated looks, and the two newbies look just as amazing. And I like that all the newcomers also have an attachment to previous Streets of Rage characters. It helps integrate them into the world as a whole very well. Even better too, midway through the arcade run, you unlock an updated Adam Hunter, meaning you have the OG trio back in action once again, and this time in glorious high definition. But what if you don't? like these updated or new characters. Well, I'd say you're nuts, but you're not out of luck entirely. Over the course of playing the game, every original Streets of Rage character from 1, 2, and 3 are unlockable for play. Each version of the originals, Skate, Max, and even Rue is playable. No lack of options for this game, for sure. And in... The Clowns. In fact, out of all the playable Streets of Rage characters throughout the game's history, the only character that's been omitted is Ash. You know, I could see why they opted to avoid putting that one in. Though, he does have a poster tribute later on in Noro's Quarters, which is a nice little easter egg at least. Something simple like this is actually amazing. They didn't need to bring these characters into the game, but they did, and it's awesome. Sure, they're a bit more simple in their HD counterparts, but it's a great touch to be honest. I'll probably just keep talking about the new characters for the rest of this review though. By extension, your antagonists all sport updated designs and look equally fantastic too. Even the simplest thug Galcia looks incredible. Hell, so do Signal and Donovan. Shirts of Rage 4 plucks choice enemies from all over. Streets of Rage history and compliments them with a handful of sick new enemy designs, alongside a bunch of great new bosses. I mentioned the basic street scrubs earlier, but in addition to them, you have an updated Garnett, Big Ben, Nora, and Eagle, too. As for the new agent forces of the Alphabet Regime, this time out, you'll be battling the corrupt police force of New Oak City in two forms. First being the standard looking beat cop in Ferocio. Ferocchio? Which, fun fact, Ferocchio was the name of a cop from the Streets of Rage comic that came out generations ago. A deep cut, if there ever was. One. You also have these futuristic looking cops with plasma shields and billy clubs. These guys have the base name of Murphy, which is a fun little Robocop reference. Changed, however, are the bikers who went from these wild road warrior looking guys to big black bikers who at higher level variants pull out the pile driver and can launch themselves across the screen with a fierce Hamilton headbutt. There's also Goro, who are these big buff ass karate dudes who can parry and dash punch like Makoto from Street Fighter. My favorite newcomer though would have to be shirtless punk Dylan who fights with his hands in his pockets. I'm sure he was inspired by Orange Cassidy. Punk rock chick Victoria is also a rad new enemy too, though outside of shove her only method of attacking is hurling various vials of chemicals or explosives at you. I'm a bit sad her initial concept didn't make it because man I love this Japanese hooligan look. New character for Streets of Rage 5, please. Newcomer 
Kubo was pretty cool too, being a skull-faced cybernetic thug with limited magnetic capabilities. Assassin Agent's Return being one of the few gun-wielding foes to accost you in Wood Oak City as well. I always wonder why these thugs don't use guns more often. Unfortunately, a few classics didn't make it into the full game, but cool enough the developers have included all manner of concept art in the game's extras, which shows how basically almost every enemy in the game's history at least made it to the concept art stage. If you're really missing out though, simply grab a taser and smack one of the arcade machines in-game and you'll be transported to a classic stage. Another really cool feature they decided to add in this game. Of course, all these punks have a rainbow of different palette colors of differing strength, with some higher tier ones having additional moves their scrubbier counterparts don't have. Not to be outdone, the bosses in this game are amazing as well. Barbon makes his return too, as a middle-aged man having a midlife crisis in a black belt in Savate. Fan favorite Shiva returns too, and Nora is a full boss this time out. Diva takes the stage as the first boss, menacing you with elemental attacks and a ball python, with her two sisters serving as a duo boss later on as well. You'll have to do battle with the police commissioner, assumingly the same one Blaze blasted in the face with a punch. Making a huge impact this game as a new boss is Estelle Aguirre, muscle lady cop and all-around bad bitch who calls in artillery support from her fellow boys in blue. Much like he used to be able to do, giving the player a taste of their own damn medicine for once. Shiva, as I briefly mentioned, makes a comeback to Shadow Clone Jutsu and not using weaponry intact, of course. A mind-controlled Max is also your foe later in the game. And at the very tippy top of this pyramid, of course, comes the most cunning and fierce war of the entire syndicate. Knife Galzia. But really, at the top of the syndicate is, of course, Mr. Y and Miss Y. Mr. Y sports an arsenal consisting of a machine gun, acrobatics, and a bazooka, too. Meanwhile, Miss Y is a bit more elegant, using a rapier and wearing Ugg boots to outmaneuver you in. But before you can get to the letter twins, you gotta work your way through the scum-infested streets of Wood Oak City. Streets of Rage 4 sports a very wide variety of locations to fight through, and all these environments are just as gorgeous as the characters in them. You have the basic city streets, of course, but you'll also head through the police precinct where the cops battle you and the thugs they've been in prison too. You have a sewer level, which, I mean, what is a video game without one, really? Chinatown makes an appearance too, where you end up fighting all these Goros and Shiva as well. There's also some more exciting levels later on even, like fighting on top of a train where you have to evade street signs that come barreling at you. And you get to bust up a rave too. There's also the Y-Twins Tower, which gives you a really packed experience of different levels, including a fancy art gallery and a sauna where sweaty, obese men watch you slide around and wallop thugs with a Swiffer. This tower also blesses you with the best level any beat-em-up game can give you. A glass elevator with breakable walls. They learned from Fighting Force's greatest failure. Also, let's take a second to talk about the fantastic tracks in this game. Every song a hit, every hit a smack. The game's music was primarily composed by Oliver De Riviere, with contributions by Das Metal and Groundislava, those fine gentlemen, and a ton of Japanese video game music powerhouses also created the soundtrack for Streets of Rage 4. The man himself, Yuzo Koshiro, returns on top of Morihiro Kawashima, Yoko Shimamura, Kaiji Yamagishi, and Harumi Fujita all provide tracks to the Streets of Rage 4. I do fine with Japanese names, but I can't do the French for some reason. Which creates one of the best soundtracks that I have ever heard in a video game. Every track perfectly complements the stage it occupies or the boss it plays for. It's so good, the main theme has been the outro for the majority of my channel's videos. Don't even care that it's a 50-50 shot of getting claimed, it's just that good. You also know the music of a given game is great if I'm using it as the backing track for a video. Which, in this case, yeah, I absolutely am. I should always make a point to talk about music in games, since good music will always push a game into being a 10 out of 10, which Streets of Rage 4 is. I've talked a lot about how gorgeous this game is, but a pretty face can only mean so much. How does it play? Spec fucking tacularly. Streets of Rage 4 keeps up the basics of the beat em up genre simple mashable combos for clobbering, get off me special, grabs, jumping attacks, the stuff you need in every game like this to make it a game like this. Weapons are also here too, duh, as is the ability to catch them off of rebounds, which is also a very, very fun feature to have. 
Beyond that, though, Streets of Rage has a lot of mechanics that you'd normally see in something like a fighting game. Wall bounces and ground bounces for combo extensions, which can be worked into your normal combo routines for extra damage. Every character also has an array of special moves. Forward moving, static get off me type specials, and aerial specials all help to up your arsenal when you're facing down the thugs of the Syndicate. Best of all is, instead of draining your health like in many beat em ups, these specials instead give you gray health, which can be restored by beating the shit out of thugs. Careful though, because if you get hit, you lose all of that temporary. Health. I like this system a lot since it doesn't make you discriminate using your special moves and instead rewards good players who can dish out damage with them while skillfully evading enemy attacks. Additionally, each main character has a mechanic that's totally unique to them, like Blaze being able to combo with knives, Cherry having air grabs, and Floyd being able to walk while holding the enemy, as well as being able to grab two enemies at once for a devastating smash attack. Capping everything off is your big fuck off special move, which you need one of these stars to pull off. All these systems and character movesets work together in a brilliant confluence of fun. Gameplay is fun, controls are tight, and there's stuff here for both novice players and more veteran players alike. A good run through of Streets of Rage 4 will take around two hours on normal difficulty. You'll be having so much fun though that it will not feel like that at all, and after clearing one playthrough, you'll quickly be swapping characters for another go with the Syndicate. You'll also have the option to beat up your friends, as well as strangers online in vicious melee type matchups. There's a boss rush too, if you're into that sort of thing, I guess. There is so much joy here in the base package of Streets of Rage 4. Beyond all this though, Streets of Rage 4 also released a DLC pack that I dare say is actually worth the asking price. Not something I say often, for sure. Most importantly with this DLC, you'll get three additional characters to play as. Buff Cop Lady Estelle, Returning Grappler Max, so you can throw your foes around, and Big Bad Boss Shiva become playable. Every New Age character gets three additional color palettes, all of which are pretty wild looking. Each character also gets a bunch of unlockable moves, which you can swap out with the old ones at the start of any mode. You unlock these moves by playing through the new mode, also introduced in this DLC. Mr. X Nightmare. Essentially a training program created by Dr. Zahn to keep all of our heroes sharp, just in case another letter of the alphabet decides to found a crime organization. The Nightmare is basically a survival mode gauntlet. You get dropped into a level, fight a bunch of enemies, and when you clear that level you reward yourself with one of three random perks. These can be anything from buffing your basic attacks, gold weaponry which lasts longer, to even giving you a buddy to fight alongside you. I generally always went for elemental buffs of my running attack, which can get pretty wacky at anything that could give me sustain. The enemies constantly ramp up in difficulty, of course, ending up with these red tinged versions which hit like dump trucks. You'll even be fighting stripped down versions of bosses as normal enemies too, alongside the normal bosses as well. I think this mode's actually pretty fun. I usually hate survival modes, but I always find myself coming back to the Mr. X Nightmare. If I could lodge one grievance though, is that when it comes to the trade-off perks, the ones that require a sacrifice to be taken, is that I often found the positive didn't outweigh the negative. Honestly, the only trade-off perk I ever took was giving up food healing for lifesteal. I could be wrong though, and maybe you have some crazy strategy that gives up jumping. Try to close out this whole package now, Streets of Rage really is a modern beat-em-up masterpiece. I'd struggle to think of other modern beat-em-ups that could hold a candle to this one, and I've played a good amount of them. Hell, most of the fan games I've reviewed on this channel wouldn't hold a candle to Streets of Rage 4. If you love beat-em-ups like I do, buy this game. If you're looking for a fun game to play, buy this game. Base game or base game and the DLC too. Honestly, the whole package is worth the extra bit of money. This game and its DLC is really that good. Streets of Rage 4 is a beautiful game. It plays amazingly, and there's actually so much content and even little touches that make the game great. I mean, they let you pick what the food pickups are. What other beat-em-up does that? The game is really what every beat-em-up coming out in this current year should strive to be, or at least compete with. Now, Sega, please let these guys do a Golden Axe remake. I'm begging you, after that retrospective, please let them do Golden Axe 4. Anyways, as always, I'm Hades Mansacore, and this little channel here is City State Mansacore. Thanks a ton for watching. Leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.